Baptism is said to be a sacrament, an exorcism of ancestral sin. But discarding all these demons won't be easy. Surrendering the privileges along with the pollutions inherited by generations past, baked into our bones. Sometimes what's needed is a fire, a fire to wake us up, to set us free, or if not, a fire to just start over. My name is Veronique Dantremont, and I'm a multidisciplinary artist based in Los Angeles. I usually say I work primarily in sculpture, but I think that what I mean by that is that I work primarily in process and materials. I really enjoy doing site-based work and um, work that's rooted in a history of a place. And so that was my interest in um, this project in Cleveland. These issues of like, environmental apocalypse and um, an eco grief, which uh, is a term that kind of talks about a, a collective sense of grieving the earth and, and the environmental devastation that it's currently experiencing. When I drove to Cleveland, I mapped out a route that actually took me to some of the most toxic cities in the United States. A city that has been sacrificed for the sake of industry or a population that has been sacrificed for the sake of industry. Um, thinking about the, the population of these cities as almost like martyrs to this larger devotion to capitalism or devotion to industry. The title is kind of a conflation of, of ideas. So you have um, baptized in fire is being thrown into a situation sort of unexpectedly and having to make, make something out of it. This idea of being baptized in the river was also something that came up when I was, when I was developing the title and thinking about it, doing my, doing my research before I came to Cleveland. I understood it to be an incredibly segregated city, that that's one of the things that I knew about Cleveland. But what became evident in my conversations was that the segregation wasn't just about um, economic segregation or racial segregation, that it was also just a segregation of um, just like incredibly different positions and ideas about the city existing in different areas of the city. So the installation is, it's a sound and sculpture installation. And so before you even enter the space, you're hearing audio that I um, composed field recordings and conversations and actually audio that is a recording of me reading this text that I mentioned, playing from one of the objects as you enter the space. The first large object that you encounter is one of um, my cyanotype tapestries that's hanging from the ceiling and it comes and it cascades onto the floor. And so when you look at this tapestry, the very first impression of it is this sort of abstract um, print cyanotype print when you're when you're looking at the print the even though that first impression you get is of this kind of abstracted image that maybe looks like water or like the sky when you look closer you see that underneath there's this architectural rubbing and what i was really interested in that i didn't necessarily plan for was the fact that you you can't actually hold both of these images at the same time. You you're you're either looking at the image of the cyanotype or you're looking at the image of this architectural rubbing of an abandoned apartment building that's situated on this line of division. So the next object that you come into contact with as you walk through the space is actually this this cart that holds uh, a tape deck and an amplifier and then some disassembled speakers and that's where the sound is coming from. So you're, you're hearing um, audio that's being played on a loop off of a tape deck. And on one side of the tape is a composition that, of, of recordings that I took on the east side of the river. And on the other side of the tape is a composition of recordings that I took on the west side of the river. So once again, it's this object that holds both sides of the story or two sides of the story in at once, but you can only hear one side. The cart implies mobility you know it doesn't it can't literally be taken all around the city but it implies that this object is meant to move and meant to travel and it feels like it's 
its purpose is some sort of public address, um, or at least meant to um, cross between boundaries and cross between neighborhoods. So the final object that you encounter when you're walking through the gallery space after you see both of the tapestries and the audio cart is um, a monitor that's actually, it's playing documentation of um, my process of washing the cyanotype in the river. I found locations along the river that were in Industrial Valley. So in all of the video, you see behind me the steel mill or other factories or other, uh, other aspects of industry um, surrounding me as I wash these prints in the river. It's like in this conversation about needing to make sacrifices, like my needing to kind of come to a place of understanding that the things that I was talking about, Cleveland also relate to this country, like Cleveland became a stand-in for this like larger thing that we're experiencing in America.